And our lead this hour coming from the NFL's coaching carousel. Is it true? The Wolverine has landed. Say what? We are on hardball watch all night. You give us a few minutes of your time. We'll give you a headache. It's not official official, but it's kind of official. The wheels are turning on Jim Harbaugh's return to the NFL. Now, if you have not heard, possibly possibly not, you will have an advantage from listening to this Mallard monologue. We are told that Jim Harbaugh is lined up to be the new head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers. Supposedly Harbaugh is all horny to coach the Chargers, and the Chargers are all horny to have Jim Harbaugh. Now, we are told that his lawyers are working out the details on uh, the amount of a buyout or payout, et cetera, all those things in the fine print of the contract. So it's not done yet. Jim Harbaugh also had a deal he thought with the Vikings a couple years ago and then ended up leaving without a deal. So they have to cross the T's and dot the I's. But one thing we've learned, it's not done until it's done. It's like uh, when I've made cookies and then I take the cookies out of the oven before they're properly cooked, the cookies do not taste as good. You've got to leave them in for the proper amount of time. The, uh, one of the, uh, the points that Harbaugh's apparently negotiating with the Chargers, he wants to bring in all of his guys. He wants to bring in the majority of the Michigan coaching staff to take over, which will then lead to a trickle-down effect where Michigan has to scramble to hire a new coach and they'll lose everybody in the transfer portal and uh, and we're off to the races. So let us discuss the question. Multiple reports in the overnight hours here that Jim Harbaugh is closing in on the Chargers coaching job. How do you see that one working out? So I've got Tesla, Canoe, and Hollow. And we'll put all of these into the popper, and we'll see what pops. So, A, it will be, if if this actually does happen, for the Chargers, it will be majestic. Jim Harbaugh actually knows what he's doing. When's the last time the Chargers had a coach that actually knew what they were doing? It's been a long time. Was it Bobby Ross? Was that the last one? They had that stiff North Turner for a long time, and then they had uh, recently, of course, another stiff uh, in Brandon Staley. But Jim Harbaugh got to a Super Bowl with that turd burger, Colin Kaepernick, who's no good, and they got to a Super Bowl with Kaepernick, and he has a very noble track record. More importantly, though, if you look at the modern coach, we see this with the Lions and the the X's and O's, eh, it's, it's important. But the head coach is often not the one that deals with most of the X's and O's. The the head coach is the one that makes the big decisions, right? The Decision, fourth quarter, you score a touchdown, you go for two rather than kick the extra point, which is what Todd Bowles did. Those are decisions made by the coach. But as far as like the play calling on offense and defense, those are normally things that are done by the coordinators and not the head coach. The head coach is motivation, and, and, and he is a maestro of motivation. Jim Harbaugh is the kind of guy that could – do a, a meeting, like a, like a webinar with Tesla owners and sell them gasoline. And, yeah, well, you need this gasoline. It's very important for your Tesla. It's very important. All right. Uh, and, and he certainly brings the wow factor. He will be the biggest deal, with all due respect to Justin Herbert, who even though the media, Chris Collinsworth, suck his toes and all those guys, uh, he, hasn't, he hasn't lived up to the hype. How about that? In, in terms of wins and losses, Jim Harbaugh just oozes winning. And he brings the wow factor, and he creates some some juice. So that will be one less excuse in the land of the bolts. And uh, Jim Harbaugh, he will have to get through John Harbaugh. It's Harbaugh and Harbaugh. They already met in the Super Bowl, so I guess they're fine with that. But they're both going to be in the American Football Conference. Now, turning the page, we go to the tabloids. Interesting story out of South Florida that came across my radar. I read that the Dolphins wide receiver Tyreek Hill filed for divorce in Broward County in South Florida there a couple of months after he uh, married uh, some woman who you don't know who she is anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, Back in November. So he got married in November, and then apparently just two months later, that's it. 
Turn out the lights. The party's over. So that story went around. And then here's where we pivoted and we went bizarre world. So you say, why are you talking about Tyreek Hill's personal life? Who cares about that? Well, it's interesting because of how Tyreek handled this. He didn't ignore it. Uh, He didn't confirm it. You see, Tyreek Hill denied it. The cheetah posted on social media, lickety split, in response to the report, which is bouncing all over the place, that said that he is over, that his marriage is over. Uh, He said, boy, no, the heck we didn't, he said, in response to the report of the divorce. Uh, So don't put that in the air. How about on the air? I just put it on the air. We are happily married and going to stay that way. Uh, Close quote. Okay. So what is going on with Tyreek Hill and the divorce drama? So I looked at this. I did some investigating, and it would appear that Tyreek Hill is paddling his own canoe in the river denial at this particular point. Right? He's denying the truth, and if you deny the truth, it does not change the facts. Facts are not open to interpretation, right? Like opinions are not. Now, is it possible that Tyreek Hill filed for divorce and then they got together and they reached compromise, he and his his wife? They worked out some kind of truce? Sure, sure. Nevertheless, the legal ball was put into motion by Tyreek Hill, right? Tyreek, he started the process or process for divorce. Now, how do we know that? Because there are legal papers that are digitally filed in Broward County, which are on the public record that has the legal name of Tyreek Hill and the legal name of the woman he married. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I can play one on the radio. But where I come from, if there are legal papers filed in your name for a divorce, you have filed for divorce. Now, whether it goes through or not, that's a different conversation. So we talk about this term a lot, and it certainly applies here, that Tyreek is gaslighting. He's gaslighting, like your favorite hack politician. You do something, then claim the opposite happened. And the cheetah, very popular in the tabloids over the last couple of months, as he has impregnated any woman that came across his path, has the cheetah seed in it, or so it would appear. All right, last word here. So we head to Jersey. We're about to get saucy on the Ben Mather show. We're going to get saucy. So Sauce Gardner, remember him? He's he's placed with the Jets, so you never have to worry about him in the playoffs. So Sauce Gardner responded to a social media post asking the Jet community whether or not they should pursue, uh, who they should pursue in free agency, who they should go after. He actually responded to it. He suggested two names. What are those two names? I will tell you. Number one, Calvin Ridley of Jacksonville. And number two, T. Higgins of the Cincinnati Bungals. So Sauce Gardner out there recruiting players to the Jets. And I'm sure we'll ask this question many times. But how much sway does player recruitment play in free agency? So I'll tell you exactly how much it plays. It is a hollow tree stump. It's a hollow gesture is what it is. It's good for engagement. If you're looking for engagement, it's pretty good. right? It's pretty good. But in terms of actual players changing teams, it doesn't matter. right? Why? Because the words are just empty gigabytes on a social media platform. Free agents. Here's the way it works. I've seen this a lot over these. Free agents will listen. They'll be excited because people are swooning over them. Oh, we want you to play for our team. Oh, you're the hottest person in the room and all that. But it will not, and it has never been the deciding factor of where you end up. It's always about the money and the situation. Money and situation, but money and then way back, bringing up the rear, the caboose situation. Meaning that some guys don't want to live in northern Wisconsin in the winter, but if the Packers ever actually ran themselves like a real franchise and paid people, they would be willing to go there. You see what I'm saying? Now, I did also take away Sauce Gardner's comments where he cheap shot at Aaron Rodgers. 
Because you and I both know that Aaron Rodgers is the GM by proxy with the Jets. And it was Aaron Rodgers that went out and made sure the Jets picked up Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb, a couple of ex-Green Bay guys. And so Sauce Gardner indirectly is tossing a machete at Aaron Rodgers and his roster-building skills. As anyone that was nice to Rodgers and smiled at him and commented on ayahuasca got an offer to play for the Jets. And what did Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb do when they played for the Jets? They both played like they had jock itch. They had jock itch when they were out there. Now now Gardner uh, wants uh, Ridley and and Higgins and all that, and uh, good luck on that. Good luck on that. Of course, it doesn't matter who plays wide receiver because at some point it is a guarantee that Aaron Rodgers will end up in the injury tent in 2024. That's going to happen at some point. 